Okay, this sermon is entitled, No Joy for the Backslider. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 19 reads, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Now, before I get into the text I want to look at, I want to explain something that there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is a cheap counterfeit of joy. Happiness would be considered pseudo-joy. It's not real. It's ephemeral. It's based on extrinsic sources. Whereas joy, on the other hand, is based on something intrinsic to the believer in Christ. Of course, if you're not saved, you can't have any joy because joy comes straight from God. But I'd like to differentiate between you know, being happy and having joy because some people will contend with this notion that there are backsliders out there that are pretty much happy all the time. They're filled with mirth or they remain in a constant state of levity. And I've even heard atheists say that they were perfectly happy. But see, the problem with this is that happiness does not last very long. And happiness is not joy. So I really don't care about this, this so-called happiness, because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 24, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And when we see the word season, it actually means for a short period of time. So a person can have happiness being backslidden, but it's not real joy. And that's why if we turn over to Jude, the Bible gives us kind of an exhortation not to get away from God, because that, in essence, is what backsliding is. See, a lot of people think that backsliding is just to recidivate back to some previous lifestyle of sin, when backsliding can simply be just not reading the Bible, you know, for a short period of time. Or maybe you stop praying for a while. And that's why we need to stay connected with God. In Jude, we see in verses 20 and 21, it reads... It says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What this is telling us is that we need to you know, stay within God's love. He doesn't leave us, but we can get backslidden and leave him and get out of fellowship with God, and that's why we're warned not to do that. Now, let's turn back to 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, we have an example of a fellowship and how it leads to joy, and how the lack of fellowship would lead to a joylessness. So let's take a look at uh, verse 1, and we'll stop at verse 4, and it reads, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and had and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. So not only can we have joy, but we can be replete with joy. And see, the condition is to continue to, to read what, what God has written in his word. And see, the backslider out there is not reading the Bible. So that's why they have to turn to the world, and the world does not offer any real spiritual joy. So now let's take a look at a few more verses in the book of Proverbs that basically describe some of the attributes and consequences of being in a backslidden state. Turn back to Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, and let's take a look at verses 23 and 24. It says, Divers' weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Man's goings are of the Lord... How can a man then understand his own way? So whenever you're backslidden, you're going your own way, and this tells us that we cannot understand it. That means that being in a backslidden state leads to confusion. It leads to lack of direction. Okay, turn over to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, and look at verse 17. It also leads to poverty. It says, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Okay, so backsliding can lead to poverty. Okay, turn back to Proverbs chapter 14. In Proverbs chapter 14, we see that it leads to dissatisfaction. It says in verse 14, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Now notice it says, satisfied from himself. See, we can be satisfied with what God has already given us. But see, the backslider cannot. They have to find their satisfaction elsewhere, 
and it doesn't lead to real satisfaction. Okay, and the next thing they get is in Proverbs chapter 3, and it's they get cursed by God as opposed to being blessed by God. In Proverbs chapter 3, we see this in verse 33. Let's back it up to verse 32, and it reads, it says, For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. So whenever we go our own way, and of course it's going to, going to be wicked if we backslide, then we get cursed by God. So what do we do about this? Well, number one, we get reconnected to God. And how do we do this? We do this first by using 1 John 1, nine. Before I read this verse, I want to point out that backsliding or being backslidden is not a salvation issue. When a person is saved, they're saved 100% by grace, and even if they backslide, grace continues to abound. This is an issue of fellowship. It's, it's an issue of rewards, and it could be an issue of discipleship, and it could be an issue of just getting right with God. So we get right with God by you know, confessing our sins. First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then, of course, we just stay connected you know, to God by reading the Bible. We see an example of this in John chapter 15. It starts off in verse 1, and I'll stop with verse 7. It reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Now, what we have from this so far is that he's warning people not to backslide. He's just saying you need to abide in me. Okay? So this idea that true Christians can't backslide or won't backslide is just garbage. Okay? Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Right now, verse 6, it reads, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So this is why we want to get out of a backslidden state, and get back in fellowship with God, so that we can have our prayers answered, and so we can just get blessed by God. So like I said, there's no joy in being backslidden. Okay? There's no joy in being lost. Okay? Lost people can have happiness, but it's going to come to an end eventually. Okay, And if they don't get saved, they're going to burn in hell, and there's going to be no pleasure at all in that. But as for the backslidden, they just need to return to God, confess their sins, stay connected to God by reading his word, then we can have our joy reconstituted. Before I close, let me go back and recapitulate. Number one, we need to realize that happiness and joy are not the same thing. Okay, Happiness comes to the world by the provision of some type of extrinsic source, whereas joy comes straight from God, like through osmosis, whenever we read the Bible. Okay, we need to understand that we are to keep ourselves in the love of God, and not to get backslidden. And then we need to be warned that backsliding leads to confusion, poverty, dissatisfaction, and having some type of a divine curse upon us. And of course, we can return to God, and let me go over one more verse on this subject, and then I'll close where the Bible tells us we can return to God. Turn back to to Jeremiah chapter number 3. Now we see several examples of backsliding here. I want to go ahead and look at a few more verses here to explain why it's so important that we return back to God. And like I've already said, this is for believers only. This is not for unbelievers. See, if a person's not saved, they can't backslide because you have to be part of God's family to be able to fall away from it. So let's take a look at a few verses that actually gives us a picture kind of the epitome of what backsliding is. Jeremiah chapter 3, let's take a look at verses 13 through 15, and then we're going to skip ahead over to verses uh, 21 and 22. It says in verse 13, Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Now we see a picture of, you know, believers being scattered. They're no longer going God's way, they're going their own way. Okay, verse 14, it says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. In other words, you guys are saved, 100% saved. Okay, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. 
So one of the reasons why you don't want to get backslidden is because you can lose you know, the knowledge of God. And then he has to you know, give it back to you. Okay, let's go back to verse 21. Let's, let's jump ahead, actually, to verse 21. It says, A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping in supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Now, that's a picture of backsliding. They've perverted their way. They've, they've forgotten about God. Okay? And then it goes on to say in verse 22, it says, Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. And once again, you return to God by using 1 John 1, nine, And then this is for, like I said, to be healed or to be blessed or to regain fellowship with God. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says on this very important subject. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.